So today I just wanted to give you um, a look at, at a full shoot with me rather than just tidbits of a shoot or you know a couple clothing changes because I wanted to go over and just how many times I change lighting setups. Um, I do it constantly. Um, I know a lot of people get complacent. They just set up a light, the, the subject changes clothes and you're using the same light, same position, you know, just a little tweak here or there. Um, but I swap out modifiers, com completely change lighting, um, you know, for what the, the, the outfit is and, and for the look that I'm going for. Um, it's a pain, uh, in, in no offense or buts, it's a lot of work, but it's worth it in the end. The other thing is, um, you know, a lot of people ask about the lighting, and I use one B10, um, you know, that one expensive light, the, you know, 250 watt second light, which, you know, uh, I'll go up to a 500 second watt light if I'm shooting a clothing catalog, but for everything else, I can get away with one 250 watt second light, and the rest are all speed lights. Um, honestly, I, I have more strobes, but for these shoots, uh, you'll see this one, you know, I used the B10 and everything else was literal speed lights. Um, even the one, I have the uh, A2, but it's still the speed light. So, you know, in closing here, you don't need two B10s or two 8600s in the Godox line or anything like that. I mean, I, I really do get away with just one heavy hitter when I need it. Um, and I, most of the time you're turning it down anyway. So you're getting more battery power if it is a battery powered unit. You know, that's the plus side of having a bigger unit. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a big expense to start. So, you know, if you can just use one powerhouse speed light like a 250, which is today, in today's world, that's a powerhouse speed light. And, and back in the day, you know, we were, we were using 1200 watt second speed lights. Um, well, not speed lights, but 1200 watt um, strobes for our shoots because we needed them. We needed them for the film because we were shooting. You just couldn't take your ISOs up that high um, without getting that very grainy look in film. So anyway, enjoy the shoot. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them below. And thanks for watching as always. So I started this shoot with the Profoto Deep Umbrella Large. And because this young lady moves around so much and is kind of contained <laughs> when I'm shooting her, um, it, you know, she tightens up if she can't move around. I, I have to switch this umbrella out because, you know, everybody thinks that the umbrellas just spread light everywhere, but when they're a deep parabolic like this, they do contain the light. So if she just backs up a little bit, I'm going to lose it on her forehead. Um, so I grab the big... Uh, Westcott that I had that's not quite as parabolic. It's still a white. Um, this is probably 71 inch, um, but it does spread the light quite a bit. And you'll notice I don't have to move this light uh, when I move her back. Um, I just turned it up a little bit to get more power out of it. Um, but this puts out great power. It gives me great coverage so she can move around and do what she wants um, as she wants to do it. And, and it's just good light. Now on the back, I have two speed lights, just regular speed lights pointing at the back wall. Um, now a lot of these photos that I'm gonna show you are out of camera. Some of them are tweaked, uh, you know, some are color corrected, but most of them are just out of camera so you can see what it looks like from the light perspective and so forth. Um, but yeah, some were touched up. Um, you'll be able to figure out which ones are which, but this is the coverage I'm getting with the two speed lights in the back and that umbrella. And I mean, that's beautiful coverage. The smaller umbrella that I started with wouldn't allow me to do that or, you know, because if she did move back or forward. So I do love a large umbrella for that and a non, you know, not quite as parabolic as like a pro photo one. The Westcott one is beautiful. Um, you know, again, I got this one used because they're so pricey. Um, both pro photo and Westcott's are just outrageous. And you can get cheap ones on Amazon or wherever. Um, that do just as good a job, job. And I love the glow speed lights, but I think they're by Adorama, they're, or the glow umbrellas. Now you notice, I just turned up the light, the power on this, just a, maybe one stop um, to put her against the wall, and I shut off the um, two 
speed lights that were lighting the wall. Um, and and it's, it's full coverage. Now all I did was raise that. I put the speed lights back on for the back wall for the white, and I raised this up you know, for a full down light. Um, you can obviously see the, 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 the hot spot on her forehead and underneath her chin is you know, darker. But if I just move her back just a little bit, it'll lighten it up a little bit. And I can throw a reflector down too, you know, well in front of her, uh, you know, with just a small tilt, and it would have taken care of that. But I like the look because I wanted this black and white, um, and I love the look of it. I like the the contrast and and what it does. So now I'm throwing in another light. Um, this is just another speed light, the you know, or the A2, if you will, um, to give her a, a small rim light on her hair because I just wanted that her hair to pop just a little bit. Um, even though I'm using the speed lights on the back wall and making that wall pure white, I still wanted a kick on her, uh, and I didn't want to have to turn up the speed lights because I don't want to have to worry about that blooming on her hair or her arms or anything from the back wall. Uh, so this gridded small soft box will give me exactly what I need. So now the next shot, I'm going to wipe out the speed lights because I want a grayish wall, you know, a more of a gradient. And because the umbrella is up that high, um, it, the fall off on it is going to give me that gradient that I'm looking for on the back wall. Uh, and, and I can just adjust it up and down to, to adjust the gradient on the back wall. Uh, if you move her closer, move the light closer, obviously it, it'll be a little bit lighter. And, but this, is, you know, this was perfect for me. It gave me the gradient. I'm getting that hair light kick. Um, it, and it worked great. So now... <laughs> Okay, this is a little crazy, but I wanted to show you this. So I saw this thing on Amazon, I believe it was, and it's used for cameras. You know, so you can pan and tilt your camera with a remote. And I thought, wow, well, this would be so cool, you know, for in studio for this specific thing, because I, I love using the, the dish, um, the, the reflector, and because it, it, it produces such gorgeous light and so powerful. So I figured I'll throw the uh, B10 on here and, and just be able to move it up and down and side to side. Well, the side to side worked, but the up and down, it was just like when you tilted it down a little bit, it just fell right all the way down each time. So I can't imagine how this would work on a camera because this is center weighted too. It's not like it's front heavy because um, that, that reflector is not that heavy at all. Um, so it did work side to side, but it won't work up and down. But the, uh, you know, the plus side of this is, I, and I really want to try this, is putting like a small speed light on here. I thought that this would be so cool for an event, you know, like, because when you're shooting an event and you're taking a, a side light, because I know a lot of you shoot side lights um, or remote lights, um, this would be really cool for an event to be able to turn your light for wherever they're at, like if they're doing the cake cutting or dancing on the dance floor, or, you know, head table. Anyway. So I was able to use this side to side, but up and down it wouldn't it wouldn't do it. And and like I said, if you're getting this for a camera, unless it's a tiny little camera, it's not going to work. And they all show it with um, you know with DSLRs and mirrorless cameras. There's just no way that's going to work. Anyway, so this is the um, what is the third or fourth lighting change. Um, love this look. Love hard light like this. It it just it works for me. Um, there's no other lights in, in use right now. I, I shut them all off, and this is just the one hard light. Um, a reflector is just so much fun. And y yeah, you're going to get hard shadows, but you know it's a look, and, and I love the look, so I use it quite a bit. Um, and the V flats here aren't paying any, they're not doing anything right now. Um, you know, just when she's in between them, they're doing something. But I mean, you can't beat that look. Um, and, and, but you know, here's the thing. If they have tough skin, if they have um, blemishes, they are going to show, um, and you're going to have to do quite a bit of extra work in post-processing for that kind of shot. If your skin is smooth and clean, it's just always an easy shot. Now again, I'm changing light. I went back to the pro photo. I knew she'd be squatting down and she wouldn't be able to move, so I like the, the quality of light from this uh, deep umbrella. Uh, so I use this for this shot, and the, the, you know this is basically at a camera. Um, not much tweaking was done uh, on the, a lot of these, but some of them it was. Now again, I just took off the grid on the backlight. This is the same speed light slash A2, um, 
and I'm just going to leave it in the shot just for you know something different um, you know to show off the purse and again I, I apologize for not tweaking all of these and not you know doing the post processing on some of these but I I, I just want to give you the basic idea of what I'm doing and how I'm doing it uh, so don't come at me for that kind of stuff it's just um, I'm just showing you the different lighting techniques I'm using and you know what I'm throwing in here uh, and I like it. I like um, the more I change lighting, the more I switch things around. For me, it's the, the more fun these the shoot is, and and the more different looks you can get. Um, and remember, I like you can do all this stuff with speed lights or whatever lights you have. Um, you know, moving a light. Don't. I know there's like these rules, these photography rules that everybody goes by, and, and they say you have to have this ratio and that ratio and stuff like. You know, just forget about it. Throw them out the window. Uh, throw it on whatever you want to throw on and just enjoy it. Um, it's a lot of fun, uh, you know, uh, and, but you don't, you won't know unless you try. And um, I guarantee you, like I have a ton of like crappy photos in this. Um, this, I just want the three foot Okta uh, cause I'm doing down lighting. I have the rim light and that's it. Um, you know, this was, a, I always use this for uh, fitness photos, you know, because it really pulls out um, the muscles, the muscle tone. Now, she's not, you know, like a fitness junkie, um, but she wants to look good, obviously. Um, so I always use this down lighting. Tweaking the down lighting is tough, and this three foot without a grid on it, I still don't have the grid for this, is not the best. But the shadowing here was pretty tough. So I pulled in the highlighter um, because you know, I only need one or two full length. I can fix them in post, but the, the three quarter or the half, um, you know, I figured let's try this. And the white side, it worked great. Um, you know, there was no issues. It, it was soft lighting, but I wanted to try the silver just to see if it would give me that extra kick. And I, I said before, when I tried this um, on another video, I just, I never liked the silver side of this thing. It just, it's too much for me. Um, as you can see here, it's just like that up light, like that Halloween kind of look, and I hate it. Uh, so I went right back to the white, and that's my shoot for the day. I hope you enjoyed it.